Hello again. In this lecture, we're continuing our discussion about conservation of momentum. And for this lecture, it's going to be a short one where we discuss one problem, one example problem in which we apply both the conservation of momentum and also the work energy theorem to a collision. So the scenario is that you have two cars which are traveling through an intersection and um, one of them strikes the other. They are traveling at right angles to one another uh, prior to the collision and then the collision takes place and the vehicles stick together so that this is a completely elastic collision and then they slide to a stop. So they have some velocity uh, here after the collision, which I'll call V sub SC, uh, and then that velocity is slowly uh, becoming less and less as the friction between the tires and the road slows the combined car mass down to, to zero. Okay, and what we would like to know is how fast each car was traveling before the in impact. So in solving this problem, there are three things that we don't know. We are told some information about um, the directionality here after the collision. Namely, we're um, given this x side and this y side of this right triangle, uh, but that's a, sufficient to tell us what the angle of this uh, velocity vector is. We're also given, given um, the masses of the car and the SUV, um, and we're told the coefficient of friction also. Um, as far as how far the cars traveled in this direction, this can also be ascertained from knowing the x and y directions by applying the Pythagorean theorem here. But we do not know the initial velocities of the vehicles, nor do we know the velocity after the collision of the combined vehicle-vehicle uh, mass. And so if there are three unknowns here, it shouldn't be a surprise that we are going to need three equations in order to solve this problem. So the way we're going to approach this, our strategy is going to be, we will apply the conservation of momentum and we will come up with some expressions for these velocities prior to the collision in terms of the velocity after the collision. And that should give us two equations because we'll look at the x and y direction separately. The third equation will come in from applying the work energy theorem after the collision takes place where we look at what happens with this velocity. Uh, remember that work is equal to the change of kinetic energy. That's what the work energy theorem tells us. And th this work that's being done is being done by friction and we have this frictional coefficient here so uh, we can hope to figure this out and so uh, that work being equated to the change of kinetic energy i.e. from whatever speed this is down to zero should help us come up with a third equation that we can use in order to solve for this combined velocity and then once we know that we can plug it into the other two equations in order to to solve for the other two velocities. Okay, so that's the strategy. So let's start with the x direction uh, to begin with. I'm just going to redraw this velocity vector here. And I will also indicate for you that this um, distance d is going to be equal to the um, square root of 5.39 meters all squared plus 6.43 meters all squared. Right? And then this angle theta could be uh, computed as the inverse tangent of um, 6.43 over 5.39. Okay, so with that we have all of the other um, information that we can derive. So 
In the x direction then, which of the following expressions will be the right one to tell to when we're applying the conservation of momentum to tell us the relationship of the initial x momentum to the final x momentum? Well, in the x direction, only the SUV is traveling in the x direction initially. So in the initial state then, we want an expression which only contains the momentum of the SUV. The car, on the other hand, is moving in the y direction, so it should not appear in the initial state in terms of its momentum. Afterwards, there will be some component to this combined velocity, which is in the x direction and that can be expressed as a cosine of this angle. So all of those ingredients come together in choice C where I have the momentum of the SUV being equal to the combined mass times the combined velocity times cosine of theta. Okay, so let's take a look now at the y direction. In the y direction, we're going to take a similar approach. This time, um, it's only the car that has initial velocity in the y direction and uh, the SUV is completely in the x direction so it's not going to uh, impact the initial momentum in the initial state at least in terms of the y direction. Then uh, in the final state the combined mass has a component in the y direction which is going to be related to the sine of this angle. So all of those choices come together in choice, um, all of those factors come together in choice D where we have the momentum of the car in the initial state equal to the combined mass times the combined velocity times sine of theta. Okay, so let's talk about what happens after the collision. Remember that we've got this velocity vector here, right, and we've got this distance D and uh, we're going to apply the work energy theorem first which tells us that work is equal to the change of kinetic energy that is kinetic final minus kinetic initial. In the final state this whole mass, this whole um, collision be comes to a rest and so that's going to mean that our final kinetic energy is equal to zero. In the initial state, however, it will be one half of the total mass of these two times their combined velocity squared. So that corresponds, hopefully you can see that, it corresponds to choice C. Zero kinetic energy in the final state minus one half of the total mass times the common velocity squared. Okay, but work also has a fundamental definition where um, work is equal to force times um, distance times cosine, um, I'll call this phi so as not to get confused with theta there where that angle is between the force and the distance. Um, and um, and um, in this example we our frictional force is acting uh, completely in the opposite direction that the displacement is, right? The velocity is going like this and the friction is serving to work against it. So the frictional force is like this. So uh, that phi in the work equal F dot D um, where that's F D cosine phi. Uh, in this case phi is going to equal 180 degrees, that is to say that work is going to be equal to negative force of friction times uh, the displacement. And remember that the force of friction is mu times the normal force. Well, assuming that these cars are on a flat surface, the normal force should be balanced by their weight. So we have then that the work done by friction is going to equal negative sine mu k times the total mass here times g, that's the weight, uh, times the distance. Okay, so we have two expressions for the work that's been done by friction. So we can set these equal to one another. 
Here's the definition of work. Here's what we found through the work kinetic energy theorem. When we simplify this expression, we get the following. Okay, and so we can then use that as our uh, strategy was already telling us we wanted to do in order to solve for this combined velocity. And once we know that, we'll be able to plug it into the equations um, that we found earlier using conservation of momentum in order to solve for the individual velocities. So uh, plugging in the numbers here, we find a combined velocity after the collision of 11.1 .1 meters per second. And we can use that now to plug into each of these expressions that we got from the conservation of momentum application in the x direction and the y direction. And then we're able to conclude that the car was moving 21 meters per second while the SUV was moving 12 meters per second. Uh, so the car was flying through this intersection, whereas the um, SUV was going less than half of the speed. Okay, and that's the only example I wanted to show you in this lecture. The next lecture, we will uh, finish wrapping up what we wanted to discuss about momentum, and we will be done then with Unit 4.